Hey, good morning, traders, and uh, welcome to the uh, the Pup Hunter Trading Show this morning. Hopefully, everyone is having a good week this week. I'm looking forward to the weekend. My son is getting married, and uh, a lot of work still to be done, but uh, we get it there. So we're going to go ahead and take a look this morning at some trade opportunities, chasing off those 20 pups and grabbing them as we uh, go ahead and uh, uh, look at trades that we've actually placed uh, uh, this week as well. We're going to go ahead and review that. I know we're still holding on to the uh, the CAD Swiss, and we've got the US dollar CAD as well. We re we'll review those and take a look and see how those trades are doing. But at the same time, we're going to look for new opportunities this morning. So let's go ahead and take a look at all of that stuff right after this. All righty, traders, well, good morning and welcome to the show. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at trade opportunities. Now, before we go ahead and do that, I always like to go ahead and remind everyone to go ahead and check out the description down below. There's a lot of good content there, as well as, of course, links to our uh, Telegram channel with all the trades that we place here in the show will be placed and sent directly to the Telegram channel. So you can go ahead and follow exactly what we do. Will we enter more trades? Will we close our positions? All of the information is going to be inside the Telegram channel. So make sure you go ahead and check that out and uh, join the Telegram group. Now, also down below, uh, don't forget to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. But also, very, very importantly, guys, smash the like button. Let's get as many likes as we possibly can so we can get this uh, video uh, beating the algorithm and sent out to as many traders as possible. That's how we go ahead and get that done. Uh, with that being said, traders, let's dive into it and see exactly what's going on this morning as we go ahead and dig into some trades. All right, I've got the New Zealand CAD open right here. And uh, as we open up the New Zealand CAD, I notice that we uh, um, we have a indecision candle up at the top. What I'm also picking up over here as well, it's also I'm noticing that uh, the market broke through this uh, upward tr tr trend line and has gone ahead and tested the backside of that trend line right, right about there. Now, oops, I've dropped my phone. Now, um, we do notice as well that uh, the market is uh, uh, fighting with uh, um, the uh, backside of the trend line, right? It's got a bit of resistance there. But at the same time, we've got uh, the oscillator showing that uh, price isn't quite moving down. All right, price isn't quite moving down. Um, based on, uh, so not price, I mean, momentum is not moving down. We've got a slightly turnaround right here, but it hasn't gone ahead and traded in the overbought condition. So it's not really giving us confirmation that we've got maybe uh, an overbought condition at the backside of the trend line, which is really good to, to have. Um, but that doesn't dis uh, discard the fact that the market is going ahead and selling off. The question here is, remember, we're always chasing after 20 pups out of the market. The question here that I, that I have as I look at the markets right here is that, um, has the market moved already 20 pups? Because if the oscillators come from an overbought condition right here, then, then it means that the momentum might still be bullish, even though we're getting a, a, a slight dip over here. My Now, my problem here is I am interested in selling over here. But since the market tested the top right here and went down to the bottom right here, we've gone already, already and moved 39 pips. 39 pips, let's call it 40 because we're friends. 40 pips, the market has moved south already based on this move that we have right here. And, and, and you know how I like trading resistance, trading support, but I also like to make sure we get it at those levels and that we're not giving too much back to the market before getting in. Right now, we've given almost 40 pips back off that resistance. And so uh, when I look at this, I go, I'm not too keen. I'm not keen to go ahead and jump in on this trade right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put a pin on this one right here and move away from the... Uh, New Zealand CAD, uh, I do like that position, but right now where it's at right now and how the market's moved, it's pretty much going to be like, let's stand aside. Well, you know what? Let's do this. Let's get crazy. and Let's take a look at the 15-minute uh, time frame right here. Well, there is another good reason why we want to stay out of sales, right? Because we've got the market in the oversold condition. Now, oversold condition doesn't necessarily mean that the market is going to bounce back up north straight away. It could mean that the market could move down another 10, 15 pips down below. 
before turning around and heading back up north. The, the deal here is it is in an area where we're anticipating correction. And so because of that, bulls have sco uh, sorry, bears have scored a point. They've taken out the previous low right here. We've got an overbought con uh, oversold condition right here. A correction is due. So because of that reason, we're going to go ahead and stand aside on that trade. Now, let's jump into uh, um, uh, let's go into US dollar CAD. Now, US dollar CAD, we're actually going to review this because we're actually in on a trade already. We are actually buying US dollar CAD. Uh, let's go ahead and give full disclosure right here. Take a look over here. Uh, if we go to the uh, chart. You can see right here I am buying. It was from yesterday. Uh, I am buying on US dollar CAD. And price has gone ahead and moved down a little bit lower, which means we're probably going to be getting in on this trade again. Uh, what is price trading at right now? Is that 43? Yes, it is. Oh, give me a second here. I've got another account. By the way, it's a trade copier. And I believe I've got to put in another buy. And on this, let me uh, go ahead and do that. For those that are following the trade copier, um, let me go ahead and take a look here. My last buy was at 66. Oh, yeah, i got to get back in again over here. So I've got to go ahead and buy back in on the US dollar CAD. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. US dollar CAD, buy at 43. Let's go ahead and do that. Boom, we're done. All right, perfect. We're in. Okay, so um, I've gone ahead and bought back into the uh, US dollar CAD just because we enter the market uh, um, every certain amount of pips. And so we've gone ahead and bought back in again. Now, this one right here, if you take a look at this trade that we're in right here, uh, we're going to look for, let's see it from here. Oh, we are inches away from being entered, uh, being entered in again. So there is a, another position that's going to be entered pretty soon here on the US dollar cap. We're just going to have to wait it out and wait for it to happen. So we will continue to buy. Now, the question here is, let's take a look at the, uh, the chart and let's see what can we expect here on a US dollar CAD. Well, we did have that good rally right here. And we actually came pretty close from getting out on uh, our position, specifically on our trade, uh, trade uh, replica. We decided we, uh, we were almost close from getting out of the positions, but we did not. This was a nice little spike here. It didn't sustain itself. It came back up to retest the 1.618 of the previous swing. Also the backside right here, which means if this is a wave one, two, three, and that is our fourth wave correction, then that means the market is heading towards the fifth wave down here. Now, traders, I want to remind everyone that this level can still be a significant level of support. And, and why would it be important? Well, it would be important if price goes ahead and moves back inside here. Then we know it's going to go ahead and retest, probably take out the previous high right here, retest the backside of the, tr the trend line, and then start heading back down south and chase after this target. So although we have a fifth wave target that is a little lower down south, it doesn't necessarily mean that the market's going to move there right away. These bearish candles you've seen right here doesn't give us the... Uh, a, 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 it doesn't give us the guarantee that we are going to be heading down to the target, which is priced up, uh, priced down here at around about, uh, let's see, what is that number? Um, 123.58. So write that down, 123.58 is the downside target. Now, I want you to take a look at the actual oscillator down below right here. Uh, does everyone take a look? Can everyone see the oscillator down below here? There it is there. I'm going to go ahead and pull it back up a little bit here. Can you see that we actually have a lower uh, lower move on the oscillator? And then, of course, the, the next value that was formed right here is higher than the previous. So if we get the oscillator starting to move back outside the oversold condition, what we're going to see here is we're going to see the uh, positive divisions, something like this. Okay? That's positive divergence. And if we're going to get positive divergence, that means there's a good chance that the market may move back above that previous low and then give us that irregular flat pattern that is going to send price back up to the, towards that spike high that we saw yesterday or the day before yesterday. Okay? So, again, don't think that because we're seeing bearish candles forming right now 
that that is the way the market can move. A lot of people get stuck with that, and they go ahead and look at the uh, the candles, and they go, "Oh my gosh, this thing's going, uh, this thing's heading south," and they're using and they're defining that based on what they seen right here. All right. Remember, there are patterns that create different types of moves in the market, and what we're seeing here is a typical, well, not typical, but a very high possibility that we may see an irregular flat pattern appear, appearing here based on positive divergence that we've seen on price and momentum. Let's wait it out and see what happens. Now, always remember, always we have a backup plan. If it's not going to work out, we're obviously going to move down towards that level of 23, 123.58. So we've got to say to ourselves that, hey, at least a 90 pip drop could be expected. Be prepared for it. Be mentally prepared for it. Be uh, psychologically prepared for it. Be um, uh, financially prepared for it. Um, if price does move down to 123.58, know that that is something that could happen. All right. But based on what we've seen right now, there is a high probability that we may go back up above that low and trade back above the spike high, which is going to be good for us because we'll go ahead and take a profit. But we'll take a look and see how that plays out. Now, the next thing. We want to go ahead and take a look at is uh, we are, we're still in on the uh, the Swiss. Uh, this is the CAD Swiss. Let's take a look at that CAD Swiss right here. And I got a lot of stuff here. I might have to do some housekeeping here. You know what? What the heck? Let's do some housekeeping here inside. Uh, so let me do this. Let me go ahead and clean up. Uh, and traders, let's see. Uh, information that you have on your chart doesn't have to be always there to to look impressive, right? Uh, at the end of the day, information on your chart should be put there to help you make decisions. But once the, the market has moved towards its target, then you need to go ahead and clean it up. Like, for instance, here, all I really need at the moment right now on the, uh, the CAD Swiss is this right here. This is a four-hour time frame. And what I have here is I've got resistance up at the top. I've got support down below right here. In fact, if I pull that resistance down a little further down right here to this level, we can see that we definitely have a, a good reason for price to want to go ahead and dip further down south. Now, remember, keep this in mind, that the, the market in consolidation moves between highs and, well, at least resistance and support. And when we get to these levels, we're always going to anticipate the market to go ahead and reject that level and then move in the opposite direction. And that's no different to what we're seeing right here. We're at resistance here. So with the CAD Swiss, we're expecting CAD Swiss to continue its move down here. Now, until it breaks through that resistance, our mindset and our focus is going to be, let's try and see if we can sell CAD Swiss. Let's go ahead and trade. Well, let's put it this way. I think this may be a better way to, to, to address it. Let's go ahead and look for reason for a downward move. And reason would be looking for downward swings, looking for bearish moves, lower lows, high, uh, lower highs. All of that good stuff indicates a downward trend. So what we're going to do here is this is the four-hour time frame, which gives us the overall directional bias. But what we want to do here is we want to move this down to a lower time frame. So let's go ahead and swing this down to a one hour. Nothing changes about the resistance. It's still there. But what we're doing right now is we're saying, all right, let's take a look and see what's going on here. Uh, here is our first wave going down. All right. Now, we're going to go ahead and focus on this first wave going down. Because why? Because this is going to anticipate where the market's going to go to before we see the next bounce. So we're going to look at the 1.618 down below right here. And we're expecting the market to get down to this level. We have to have some sort of guidance as to where we anticipate markets to turn. The market's going to turn down below there. Now, that's going to be always our target. Unless the market takes out this high right here, this is what I'm going to be focused on. I'm looking for price to drop back down to this level, which is priced at 73.75. So 0 0.7375. Now, let's take a look at a couple of things that we can use to anticipate, uh, you know, uh, what the market is doing here. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to take some trend lines, and I'm going to draw it across the, uh, uh, the, 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 the lows right here. All right. Notice that I, I often sometimes, all right, how, <laughs> did you hear what I just said? I often sometimes, all right, same thing. All right. So I, I sometimes 
use um, you know trend lines and places on uh, the bodies of the candles. Like uh, I've started off the wick there, but I crossed it across the body right here because the body really tells me where price is really trading. The spikes can be just price manipulation. It could be stop hunting. And if you haven't heard that before, stop hunting is where the, uh, the, the market makers go ahead and hunt for your stop losses. And when that happens, when they hunt for your stop losses, what, they, what you tend to see in the market in, in, in price is you tend to see these spikes through the support and resistance level. But it's where the bodies are is where really price is trading. That's why you never really want to go ahead and put your stop loss right behind support or right behind resistance because there'll always be a spike through there just enough to go ahead and stop you out. And you're probably thinking, man, the broker's checking out my trades. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, not all brokers. All right. Let me, let, me, let me put a disclaimer there. Not all brokers do that. But there are some of those brokers out there that do still use stop hunting software to be able to hunt for your stop because they're trading against you. Maybe I should not be saying that. All right. Well, this is the deal. There are some legitimate brokers out there that are definitely not doing that stuff. They really are interested in your success. And so with that being said, go ahead and take a look at a, uh, a word from our sponsor here. All right. Uh, well, one of the brokers I believe is a uh, 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 legit, uh, honest brokers, and of course we all got good. We have a good partnership with them. Go ahead and check out ACAP Brokers and or ACAP. That's it, not ACAP Broker, but ACAP. Go ahead and check them out. If you want to open up a trend account, check out down below. We have a link there. You can go ahead and open an account based on that link. And if you do open an account using our link, we'll go ahead and help you start off your trading with a free uh, a free month. Of a trade replica that has done 153% in 2021, and this year alone we're over 60% already. In fact, we're at 18% this month in on a trade replica. We did actually we didn't think we were going to beat uh, the last two months. Uh, we made 14% uh, uh, on the or oh, 15% on the in January. We made 15% in February. And now we're at 18% and we're not done yet. 18% for, uh, for March. So we're doing pretty solid. But you'll get a free month of that. You go ahead and use that link and open up a trading account with eight brokers. So eight cap. Um, all right. Now back to the charts. Let's take a look and see what's going on right here. So we got the, uh, the cat Swiss here uh, being rejected off this level right about here. And uh, what we're going to be looking for is price to continue to fall. We're looking for the CAD Swiss to continue to drop back down here, which is going to give us about a, about a 57, maybe a 58 pip drop. So we're going to hang on to that. Um, now, we are still currently selling, as you can see right here, uh, open, you know, this is a complete comparison, uh, uh, complete transparency here. Yeah, you can see that we are in on this trade. All right, so we are in this trade. We got a break-even point about 19 pips away. Uh, we're probably going to be taking profit about 25 pips away from where we're trading right now. We'll keep an eye on this, and we'll keep monitoring that. Let's go ahead and take a look at a uh, let's go to Aussie cat and New Zealand cat and Euro, Euro US dollar. So let's go to Euro US dollar first right here, and uh, let's take a look at. Um, the way euro us dollar is set up right here i like i like the euro us dollar buy at the moment right sorry sell at the moment right now um i do like to sell with this big rally that we've seen right here and and let me see if i'm going to calculate this right check this out if you're looking at the four hour time frame in your mind i'm probably going to answer this before you can answer it but in your mind if you look in the chart right here what do you see that we just spoke about that really helps us to be able to define if the market is going to be turning I'm going to give you a minute. I No, I lie. I'm not going to give you a minute. I'll give you a couple of seconds. All right, I'm going to answer that. If you're looking at the chart, you're seeing negative divergence. That's a key right there. So when I look at the chart right here and I look at a four-hour look and I see negative divergence, I'm anticipating price to go ahead and pull back. So this is the deal. What I'm looking for is if this, if this is an indication that price is going to dip, 
what type of dip are we going to expect? What type of correction are we going to move? Is this going to be a fourth wave target? Or are we just looking for a small dip and then another continuation of a rally? Well, what is it that we're really looking for? Well, I'm looking at this. And I'm going to pull, uh, hold on, I'm going to pull some more data in here. I'm looking at this and I'm seeing this right here. Firstly, number one, I'm seeing a swing going up right here. I see resistance here. All right, there's resistance. There's resistance, and now here's resistance right here. So that level is very significant. I'm going to go ahead and kill this trend line. Trend line means nothing right now. It's dead to me. So let's go ahead and kill that. Again, information we don't really need. I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's see. Here. This is the one hour, by the way. That's the four hour right there. So the four hour, I'm going to go ahead and pull this train line. This train line, I'm going to kill as well. I'm going to kill that train line. All right. Now, I'm also noticing that the, the, the euro created is wave one, two, three, four, five. So which means that we're actually thinking euro uh, midterm is going to be rallying to around about 1481. So that's important, right? So. So we, we're expecting the euro US dollar to continue this rally to around about 1.1481. Uh, so when I dig down lower, when I go down to the lower time frame right here, I am expecting a breakout of this level right here. But it's non-farm payroll week, right? And we're trading against the US dollar right here. And normally when there's non-farm payroll week, the markets tend to be a little bit sideways. Uh, we did have uh, ADP numbers that came out this morning. Let's take a look and see what that looks like. ADP numbers right here. So they were expecting uh, ADP numbers to come out uh, positive, and um, it came out as expected. Um, actually, uh, 455. So the actual number came out just as what they forecasted, which was, by the way, uh, lower than the previous. But look at the revised numbers. All right, uh, the revised numbers actually uh, um, revised higher from 475 to three, uh, 486. So that could be a positive number based on the revised numbers. Now, this is just ADP numbers, which is almost like a, a leading indicator as to what's going to happen in the non-farm. So we might have the numbers coming out as expected in the non-farm, but it might be a, a surprise based on the revised numbers that might create a positive move on the dollar. Well, we'll have to wait and see. If the dollar is going to strengthen this, uh, this week based on the, the, the data coming out, then we should end up seeing the market dropping back down south and staying inside this range. So we're starting to see the oscillator falling here. Okay. And if I go down to the, the one hour, we can actually see a lot more clear. We can actually see the negative divergence here. And so we have negative divergence setting up right here. Now, what I'm going to do is this. I know that the market can also create this little rising wedge, okay? Something like this. Especially when I see the market pushing up so high like this, we can see this rising wedge forming right here. And with the, uh, with the, 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 the oscillator pushing lower and the, seeing the rising wedge here, it's making me believe that there might be an opportunity for us to be able to go ahead and sell right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and sell right here because I do see the oscillator in a good spot there. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to go to the um, I'm going to go to the uh, uh, the the uh, system right here. Uh, this is the uh, pip, the Pip Hunter trading tool. Uh, if you want to know a little bit more about the Pip Hunting trading tool, go to our website uh, tradersnetworkclub.com and click on the Start a Member, and you'll take a look right here. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and sell Euro US dollar right here. So I'm currently in on the euro US dollar looking for a sell. Again, if you want to check out the, uh, the, 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 the signals, check out our Telegram channel. Uh, join our uh, uh, Telegram channel and you will see all the trades that you put in here. So I'm going to sell your, uh, euro US dollar. Now, we did that yesterday and we made some money. We're going to go ahead, we got, we've gone ahead and done that again today. And not just we're expecting euro US dollar to sell off. But we're also expecting US dollar CAD to move north. So which means strong dollar on both ends will create US dollar CAD to rally and create the euro, uh, euro US dollar to sell off. I think we're in a good spot right here. 
let's play it out and see what happens. Let's go to the cat pairs. All right, let's take a look at uh, uh, Aussie Cad. All right, so Aussie Cad at the moment right now, we've actually paid out. We've actually uh, had a couple of payouts on the Aussie Cad uh, and the New Zealand Cad as well. The one thing I don't like about the the uh, the Aussie Cad right now is that uh, we're at a level of support right here. Let me go to four hour. Let me first explain to you why I don't like it. All right, let's take a look here. Well, I I I, I, I can't really say I don't like it. But let me let me go ahead and explain some here. All right, so we've got a wave one, wave two, wave three right here, and then we move down here to a wave uh, four. So we're looking for uh, the the Aussie CAD to still move up uh, towards this level right here. Now, if I look over here, I did get a an A B C. In fact, a little bit more than that. Let me take a look here. Let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and pull in a fib here. I want, I want to just take a look here. So we had a failed, a failed fifth wave here. So we actually had a five-wave structure here. One, two, three, four, and then five here. Uh, this was a failed fifth wave, and, and so the market goes back up and takes out the fourth wave, which it did, by the way. There it is there. But it went out and took out the wave two over here as well. So if I look at this right here and I look at the oscillator, I'm thinking Aussie CAD should be selling off a little bit further down south. So I would probably want to be selling it. Let me see here. Let's clear up a few things here again. Clear up that. All right, so yeah, look at this. So we have a, a wave structure right here that the price did not hit the 1.618. And so we're right here at the, this support. That's, that's a support level that's important. And so because I want to sell and I'm at the support right here, I'm seeing a positive, a, a, a positive divergence here. So I'm in two minds here. I want to see price dropping back down to this level right here, 92.92. And I, I'm, I'm not sure about the support level here, whether it's going to hold. I, I honestly do believe it's not going to hold. The price is going to move below that. Um, just also because we uh, we did not reach the 1.618 yet. So when I'm a little unsure of what's going on, I think the best thing for us to go ahead and stand aside or put a pin in it and then check out the New Zealand CAD. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the New Zealand CAD. Now, the New Zealand CAD, yeah, we spoke about it uh, this morning. And the New Zealand CAD, we said it was just too late to get in this. And take a look at that pullback. Look at the 15 here. See how the market's already started to pull back a little bit? Uh, let's see if I put in the trend line here. If I was going to enter this, probably needed to go up a little bit higher. Yeah, so both the um, both the uh, the Aussie CAD and the New Zealand CAD, um, is to in my opinion looking bearish but at the moment right now i'm not finding a perfect entry point to get in on this and there is no perfect entry point but so i guess i'm never going to find it but i guess i'm not at a level where i'm going to be comfortable going ahead and selling because i'm expecting uh the market to either bounce off uh, reject the support level and bounce and then the opportunity might be there but not at the moment right now now if we do blow through that support and then the market comes back to retest the, that support and become re, that becomes resistance, then that could be an opportunity for us to go ahead and trade. So for right now, traders, I think I'm going to stand aside on New Zealand, um, New Zealand CAD and Aussie CAD just because of the way it's setting up right here. But we do have some trades that we've gone ahead and implemented. Here we go. All right, this is it. Let's go ahead and sum up. So we're long. We're still long from yesterday. US dollar CAD, we wait for that to pay out. We're still short on the CAD Swiss from last week. We're you looking for that to pay out. And now we've gone ahead and entered a trade this morning on the US dollar, uh, Euro US dollar, looking for a short on the US Euro dollar, uh, Euro US dollar for 20 pips. We're going to continue to hold those positions, see how it plays out. And trades, with that being said, that's it for me this week. In fact, we're not going to have a session tomorrow. Uh, Cameron and I are going to be doing a lot of stuff leading up to his wedding on the Saturday. So I've got a lot of stuff on my plate to go ahead and take care of. I'm taking some time off and uh, just notice that. Uh, we lost uh, my, my video.
I do apologize for that. All right. So uh, there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, we're going to be doing things uh, leading up to the wedding on Saturday. So we're going to be doing a lot of stuff to get things done. So tomorrow will not be a Pup, uh, Pup Hunter trading show. So have a great weekend. Uh, have a great weekend, whatever you're doing. We'll see each other back again next week on uh, Tuesday as we go ahead and jump back into some trading opportunities. This is the FX Big Dog signing off.